magnitude 7.8 in the horrible Drake Passage. USGS has given a tsunami warning for Chile and Argentina. What is going on, guys? Hey guys, this just happened. We have another big earthquake in the Drake Passage, 7.8, magnitude 7.8. And based on the magnitude scaling, we could be dealing with a large fault rupture. It could span roughly 1,000 square kilometers and... Uh, the fault length could be roughly 40 miles, 55 kilometers. And that is typical for a quake of this size. And interestingly enough, the location is nearly identical to the August magnitude 7.5 earthquake that happened in the same area. It, they're, they're just basically 3.6 kilometers. That's roughly 2.7 miles apart. And this suggests, guys, a possible connection such as a stress transfer or like an aftershock activity from the earlier quake. And this one is larger, at least for now. It just happened. We have to see how they adjust the magnitude. And why do the earthquakes happen there? And, you know, we've seen basically a lot of earthquakes in this area. So the Drake Passage, it sits in a tectonically very complex and active zone. That's why we see this here. Um, it's basically shaped by the interactions of several minor, but also major plates. And this earthquake, like others in the region, it stems from the ongoing plate tectonic stresses that formed the passage itself over millions of years. So tsunami warning is issued for coastal areas there. So the Drake Passage, it's not along the Pacific Ring of Fire. So this is not the culprit. Basically, it's it's a, a body of water that is connect, connecting two oceans. It's connecting the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean between the southern tip of South America and Antarctica. It's a 600 mile long, roughly 1000 kilometer wide stretch of water between Cape Horn in Chile and the South Shetland Islands of Antarctica. So for sailors, this is a critical area that if you don't have to, you don't want to be in there. It's known for its powerful winds and the powerful Antarctic circumpolar current. So that's why it's also called the gate between two continents. And now that gate is rumbling and it's shaking. The gate between Antarctica and South America. And really, it's a crazy and horrifying thing that many people say. It's the waves and the weather of this particular area is absolutely crazy, guys. The water travels from the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean through this gate. And now the earthquakes are creating more hazards. So it is already a terrible place if you have to be there. And in early days, when the humans were exploring and circulating around the whole world, especially the Spanish and the British empires, they were trying to colonize new lands. They explored this area and they marketed it as one of the most dangerous and hazardous places in the world and the crazy part about it is if you look closely at how strong the waves are so the drake passage itself was formed millions of years ago when tectonic plates were shifting and they separated south uh, um south america and antarctica and this process of course has created new spreading centers and fault systems the ones that we're dealing Right now, fault systems on the seafloor that remain very active until today, as we have just seen. We've had, before this one, at least two significant earthquakes this year already. In May, a 7.4 and in August, a 7.5. And they occurred on the boundary between the Scotia and the Antarctic Plate. And it was caused by a thrust fault. This is a hot spot for earthquakes. So the earthquakes occur both at the plate boundaries, but also within the plates themselves. 
So let's look at the Antarctic, the South American, and the Scotia plates. There's complex interactions between these plates and it's both. They're moving past each other, but they're also colliding, and that causes this seismic activity there. And the Antarctic plate, it's basically, it, it forms the, the foundation of the Antarctic continent and the surrounding ocean floor. It's a very, very massive plate. And then we have the South American plate. It holds the continent of South America and extends eastwards into the Atlantic Ocean. And then we have the Scotia Plate. That's a smaller one, but geologically, it's a very, very complex plate. The Scotia Plate, we've talked about this a few times before, it's nestled between the Antarctic and the South American Plate in the region of the Drake Passage. And it was formed by the fragmentation of the former continental connection between the South, between South America and the um, Antarctic Peninsula. They have been connected, but now they're apart. That's why we have that Drake Passage. And then we have a fracture zone, the Shackleton Fracture Zone. It's a major fault system within the Drake Passage. And basically it acts as the boundary between the Scotia Plate to the east and the Antarctic Plate to the west and it's a left lateral strike slip fault. So it's not a subduction zone. And the plates are sliding past each other horizontally. And the motion along this one and other faults in the region is creating these frequent earthquakes. If we compare today's magnitude 7.8 earthquake to the location of the one in August, the 7.5, it's nearly in the same spot. And that was in August, it was described as an intraplate, a potential intraplate earthquake within the Antarctic plate, rather than being exactly on one of the mapped boundaries, but it's still linked to the reg regional stress from the Scotia and Arctic interaction. As I just said, it's possible to see earthquakes on the plates and not only on the boundaries. So if we have a compression, like a thrust faulting, that's this compression system, um, that was noted to be related to the early May 7.4 earthquake along the Antarctic Scotia boundary. So we have basically a mix here of uh, compressional and shear forces in this region, possibly with some subduction remnants influencing the tectonics. So why do we see this earthquake now? The plate motions here are driven by the westward push of the South American plate. So it's pushing to, to the west and it's spreading eastwards towards the East Scotia Ridge, and that's creating shear stress. And then we have the Scotia Plate that's kind of moving around independently at about an inch, an inch and a half per year. That's one to two centimeters per year uh, relatively to its surrounding plates. So it's building up an elastic strain over time until it exceeds the strength of the rock, and then it's triggered. So the quake in August may have somewhat destabilized the nearby faults, and that could contribute to today's event. The broader factors for this earthquake could be the overall convergence of the Scotia Arc, where subduction was once dominating, but has evolved into transpression. That's what it's called. It's basically a combination of strike, slip, and compression. So the Drake Passage has had over 12 notable events in 2025 alone, so it's a very significant seismic area. It's remote, but it poses risks to shipping. This passage is a key route for Antarctic expeditions, for example, scientific bases in Antarctica. Um, tsunami generation is definitely a concern. Um, due to the shallow depth and the underwater faulting that is there in this place. So I hope this explains a little bit what we're dealing with here. 
I will keep you updated, guys. I hope you like this video, but check out the videos in the end screen. Crazy things are going on. We just had an earthquake in the Philippines, very destructive, but we do have a new threat for the West Coast that is overwhelming, something nobody ever, ever had on the map, and it will be the biggest disaster ever that Canada and the US will face together, guys. Two monsters are combined with each other. There's evidence from the past that it has happened. And guys, this will be way more catastrophic than the big one that is everyone fearing. Check the link in the end screen. I see you there in a second. If you want to support the channel, go to the link in the description, buymeacoffee.com slash silky thanks for that coffee keeps me going thank you for your supers shout out to my members click here i see you bye